We're here with our own head baseball coach, Steve Sackasetz. The Quakers will take on the Kalamazoo College Hornets in the three-game series at Sadler Stadium this weekend. But, Coach Sack, let's first recap the uh, opening, season opening series, which happened two weeks ago at Sadler Stadium, uh, sweeping Sewanee in the three games. Got to feel good for your ball club. Yeah, you know, opening up, uh, especially getting out there, playing a team that's played at that point, I think upwards of eight or nine games, uh, was very good. Uh, you know, again, they struggled a little bit early, but, you know, they've... Uh, They've done a good job against us in the past. I think we only had one one series in the past against them, but no team had ever swept. So coming out of that series with three wins was big for our club. Uh, saw a lot of good things and also a lot of bad things. And if you can come away from a weekend and not play your best baseball and still get three wins, you got to see some upside to it. But also there's some things that we needed to work on, and hopefully we've addressed those uh, issues here going into Kalamazoo. And I know two of the offensive players that really helped you out in that first series, Cody Crumloff and Nate Lynch, each had five hits, and Brandon Smalling, who had the game-winning hit in Game 2, drove in three runs. Talk about some of your offensive performers th thus far this season. Yeah, uh, I mean, Nate was, was big for us in the catalyst to start the lineup up, and Cody, uh, as a junior right now, I think he's going to come into his own offensively, so it was really good to see. Uh, Smalling, uh, you know you know you're going to get good stuff from him. He, the best thing I saw about Smalls is his at-bats were, were battles. Um, I don't think he had his best weekend overall hitting, but he battled, and that last at bat he had that won the game there was a battle. Um, and you know we didn't get much from Tommy Ray or or Brennan Laird, and, and that's what's scary, man. We can go you know pretty much nine deep in our lineup with a couple guys off the bench that we think are going to be pretty aggressive and and can swing the bat for us a little bit. And then on the mound, Junior Howie Smith got you the game one victory, seven shutout innings, six strikeouts. And in game two, Bryce Rainey uh, didn't quite have his A stuff, but Jonathan Hicks was some great relief. And then game three, John Cornett uh, got the start, and Walter Talcott uh, closed out. But I know one of the things we were talking off the air that you were happy about is the uh, few amount of walks your staff gave up in three games. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it started with the first guy, Howie, setting the tone for the weekend, and that's what you want your number one to do. And he did that and got the first game for us and pitched a heck of a game. You know, Bryce didn't have his best stuff. Bryce always battles. Bryce gave us, I think, five and a third innings, gave us some good opportunities opportunity there to stay in the game could have gotten even worse and it did and he left it right there when it was you know, I think he gave up five runs but it wasn't much and and John going into game three um, you know uh, getting the chance to to get a start and did some good things and then the bullpen you know Dalton Carter John Hicks Walter Talcott the guys that threw the bullpen came in through strikes you know we walked <coughs> Uh, three guys in 27 innings, but one of which was an intentional walk. So uh, I was really happy how our pitchers hammered the zone, and that's what it's going to be about. Let our defense make plays, be aggressive and dictate counts on the mound. And our kids did a great job of that. Transitioning to the Kalamazoo series here will be again at Sadler Stadium with a single game at 2 p.m. on Saturday and a doubleheader with first pitch at noon on Sunday. Kalamazoo, kind of a similar team, Steve, kind of up and coming, maybe hasn't had the tradition-rich uh, program similar to us here at Earlham. Uh, Co-players to watch the Kalamazoo side, Ian Kobernick and Mitchell Vancouvering, one outfielder and one shortstop uh, in their lineup, then Ryan Orr, they're a pretty good one there at the number one pitcher. Talk a little bit about what you see from Kalamazoo. Yeah, I mean, Kalamazoo, uh, they're always a battle. Um, you know, Coach Otto over there has done a great job of building those guys up and recruiting really good players to come in and play for them. And again, he was in a similar spot as what we were, a program that's high academics and uh, hadn't had much success in the baseball field, and they're getting it there. They're seeing a lot of respect in the MIAA now. Uh, I think they're picked third in the conference. Um, their number one guy, Ryan Orr, is a stud. He's a good pitcher. He's going to be you know, aggressive against us, threw well against us last year, uh, pitched the game that they actually won against us last year. And uh, the rest of the pitchers are, are going to be some guys that we've seen before, some lefties out there. Um, you know, so we're hoping we can we can do some things offensively, battle in our bats, and give ourselves a chance. Um, you know, they're they're the Kubernetes kid, and uh, also the shortstop um, are pretty good. Um, you know, they're going to be guys that have been in the lineup now for them uh, for I think this is their third year coming back for them. Um, they did lose a lot in the middle of their order, and I'm sure they've got guys that can fill those spots for them. So there's a little bit unsure on what they're going to have after a few hitters that we know of. Um, so that'll be interesting to see, but you know that they're going to go out there, they're going to compete, they're going to play good fundamental baseball, and uh, hopefully uh, you know, we can take it to them here at our place and, and uh, get another series win. And uh, the Quakers are 5-1 and one against the Hornets the previous two seasons. I guess finally Steve won kind of uh, thought that I've had is the ability to play these games in late February and early March uh, here on campus. Had three games against Suwannee, three games against Kalamazoo this weekend, and then three next weekend against Wilmington. Um, talk a little bit about what Sadler Stadium gives us in terms of the turf and being able to play. Um, you know, a lot of these northern teams trying to come down to play early and early in the season. Yeah, I mean, uh, if we didn't have Sadler Stadium, we wouldn't be playing 24 home games a year, and we have that this year, had that last year, and uh, have that next year as well, too, with our home games. So, 
you know, we love playing out here. We had 19 wins at home last year, so we're pretty tough to beat at Sadler. Um, you know, and getting the teams to come down here, knowing that they're going to get the game. And I'm looking outside right now. We've got some some snow coming down, a little bit of rain, but it's not going to stop us from getting out there. The accumulation is not going to be much. We'll get on the field. We'll get a chance to play. Um, you know, and, and other teams around here in the area don't have that ability. So I think that's another benefit for us when we look at the recruiting part is we have a facility that gets us to play home games. Our kids aren't missing class. Um, and it's excitement to play out at that facility because I think it's one of the best in the country. And once again, the, uh, the Quakers are going to take on Kalamazoo, a single game on Saturday at 2 p.m. at Sadler Stadium and a doubleheader beginning at noon on Sunday. Live statistics and live video will be available for all those games. Coach Sack, best of luck this weekend. Thank you.